you go. ChatGTP is free. You can use version 3.5 and 3.5 is pretty good and interesting. Pay the $20 a month for version 4.0. It is so much better. It's amazing. It's worth the best $20 I've ever spent on anything in my life. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Having Report podcast. I am your host, Brad Bynes. The price of Bitcoin is approximately twenty-seven thousand U.S. dollars, and there's only about one hundred and seventy days left until the next Bitcoin halving. Today is the second iteration of our hundredth episode special featuring Roger Ver. If you haven't seen part one, I advise you to watch that episode first. If you've seen it, please continue. Roger had announced that he's finally writing his own book. And on part one of the 100th episode special, Roger announced that he not only has one book coming out, but two books coming out on a world premiere on the Havoc Report podcast. Subscribe if you want Bitcoin to go to a million dollars. Today on part two, we asked Roger some more questions about crypto and technology, and we end things off with a few fun blitz questions for him. If you're not subscribed on your favorite podcast platform, what are you doing? Do it now. So without further delay, let's get to part two of the 100th Havoc Report special episode. Another, another question I want to ask you because I know you've interviewed him and I not too long ago had Janice on, but I wanted to ask you about your experiences with John McAfee. I know you guys are you know well both well-known libertarians and he was, he was running for the, the leadership of the party in the States there. What was your experiences with John, and do you have any thoughts around his his death? Yeah, so like I, I knew John. Uh, I can't say that I was you know his best friend and you know hang out with him every day, but I I knew him and we had you know hung out multiple times. You mean you and, weren't uh, part of his militia? No, I was part of his militia, but <laughs> I, I I do say like I hope that when I'm the same age that he was, like I hope you know if I'm even half as sharp as he was, like I'd, I'd be pretty pretty happy with that. And like one example of that, uh, we were on a, a crypto cruise and somebody in the audience was talking about some hardware wallet he was involved with and how it got hacked, right? And like he said, like, don't you feel bad about that? Or what do you think about that? And he goes, did they steal the crypto? No. All they did is they managed to like install like a Nintendo emulator on it. They got to play video games on it. So they should be thankful. That's an extra feature they got for free and didn't have to pay for. And he didn't miss a beat with that as a reply. And I thought, wow, what a, what a great reply uh, that was. And so like, did he kill himself? Probably not. Uh, his former running mate, Adam Kokesh, who knew him much better than I did, said absolutely not, no way in heck. And, and I think I think John's wife also thinks he, he did not as well. So, um, you know, governments murder people. It's not a secret. Look at the, the JFK, uh, you know, records. They still haven't released it. What And everybody involved there is dead. So what possible reason could they have for, for not having released it yet? I think the reason that makes the most sense by far is that the government was involved actively in killing him. And then a lot of people don't know this, but like uh, Martin Luther King, his family sued the government and the family won in civil court that the government was responsible for killing uh, Martin Luther King as well. So like it isn't unheard of for governments to kill people that they don't like or are saying things that they don't like. And so like one example of, of this, even for my own life, and I don't have 100% hard proof of what the origin was, but we know who would have a motivation. Uh, somebody very well drafted letter at one point even tried to have my nationality stripped uh, and would leave me stateless at one point a number of years back and like luckily the the government uh, that I was under at that point uh, didn't do that to me and I'm grateful to them for that but what a dirty dirty uh, trick and then another example with a uh, John McFaffey and his former running mate uh, Adam Kokesh if you haven't seen Adam Kokesh's previous YouTube videos there's some great ones out there and I was a real fan of so I donated money to him every month for for years and years and years and at some point, uh, he ran for not president of the United States on a platform of, uh, if he's elected, you would have an orderly dissolution of the United States federal government. Well, lo and behold, because I'm not an American any longer, the, uh, the Federal Election Commission looked into prosecuting me criminally for being a foreigner interfering in, in American elections. Because I gave money to a guy who ran for the nomination of the uh, Libertarian Party, who wound up getting like eighth place in the nomination for a party that wound up getting like half a percent of the vote. And they want to prosecute me for criminally interfering and they had some, you know, 
hearing or whatever that's a four person panel to decide whether or not to prosecute me criminally. And it was deadlocked two to two as to whether or not to prosecute me. And I was just like, wow, I just barely escaped being criminally prosecuted again for giving money to a guy who makes videos on YouTube because I like the message he's spreading. And my other, and I, I said, that was so close and scary. And my other buddy said, no, that's the best possible outcome you could have had that it was so close. And I said, what, what do you mean? And I said, he said, think about it. You pit, that means you pissed off the maximum number of them that you possibly could, and there's nothing they can do about it. So then, then I felt a little bit better about the whole situation, but I'm, I'm glad I'm not being criminally prosecuted for giving money to a YouTuber in America that claims to be, you know, the, the, the home of free speech. Exactly. Now, was you think you were targeted there just because of who you are? I think I was targeted because okay. of who I was giving money to, plus oh. who I was. So they were like, oh, right. it's two for one, right? So, right. Are you, are you able to travel and, and visit the United States? Yeah, I, I have a 10-year yeah. multiple entry visa for, for the United States. I can go there anytime uh, I'd like, although I haven't been since before COVID. It's been a few years. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe later this year or next year, I'll, I'll visit that way. Fun Blitz question, Android or iPhone? Uh, iPhone. Yeah, so it's been, like I said, it's been a couple of years since you and I have spoken, but you know, there's obviously a lots, a lots have gone on. Is there anything that's kind of happened lately or that you're expecting that's going to impact in the in the space? I know you already were, were talking about the, the privacy tokens, but uh, you know, beyond that? Yeah, I, I think privacy tokens at the front of my radar. And then of course, like mm -hmm. AI, like Chat GTP is already so smart. You know, the, the next version is just going to be un, unimaginably smart. Maybe the next version will actually be able to solve my girl problems. So, <laughs> so pretty close with some good advice. The next one will actually be able to solve those issues. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Well, if you make any headway on that, you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to get your DMs on some, on some tips and, and tricks because uh, that's a well, lifelong actually, one battle. Tip I do have a lot of people think, oh, Chat GTP is free. You can use version 3.5 and 3.5 is pretty good and interesting. Pay the $20 a month for version 4.0. It is so much better. It's amazing. It's worth the best $20 I've ever spent on anything in my life. It's so amazingly good. So pay the 20 bucks for ChatGTP4. Yeah, I didn't use 3.5 for very long before I realized that 4, I'm like, I got to get 4. Like, this is this is wild. Yeah. And yeah, going back to, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the wallet that McAfee was talking about. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of the the BitFi here, obviously, on BitFi Warrior uh, on Twitter. I feel like it was just built around freedom from the ground up, makes it easy for travel back it up and it doesn't matter if you lose it like it's just been all around pretty awesome but yeah do you have any do you have any favorite like hardware I, i'm sure you use you know bitcoin.com but like for hardware like do you have favorite wallets yeah i actually plug plug the mcafee wallet there again i'm gonna order one because uh, I, I haven't used it myself so yeah man this is this is uh bitfi i got yeah, some stickers yeah, on the back Okay. And cool. uh, I got the two on the back because they did after that bounty that he was talking about, uh, they came out and uh, with all these improvements. Now it's basically becomes unusable if anyone tries to tamper with it. Yeah, they basically entered their their password into it and then cold booted or somehow got the password back right away, but didn't get keys off any of the bounty wallets that were mm -hmm. out there. But they've essentially made some minor upgrades now, and it's 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 pretty solid. I've been using it ever since 2018 when they launched, and, and McAfee start, first started talking about it. I know he had a he had a bunch. I saw a picture one. He had a whole bunch of them on his dresser. I don't know why you need that many. He's just maybe an excessive guy. He probably didn't need that many guns laying around him either. But yeah, there you had him, right? Yeah, if you want one, man, I got you know not that the the discount would probably matter too much to you, but I have I uh, always give out my plug. You know, 50 bucks off for US off. It's a 200 dollar wallet, so. Uh, uh, and I know it's not on the cheaper end of wallets. Like I think most are like 100, 150 around that range. Yeah, I think somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, it's been a while since I bought a hardware wallet. So. Yeah. I, so, I have a blitz question for you. What sure. motivates you to make this podcast and, and be involved in crypto? Why are you here? Yeah, great question. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. I fell in love with, with the decentralization ethos of, of Bitcoin after learning how corrupt the banks are and you know how corrupt things really are. So I just I fell in love with Bitcoin when I came when it popped up on my radar again in 2017. A year year and a half went by, and I'm just thinking to myself, wh how, what way can I contribute? I'm not a developer, although you know I, I you know taking you know, classes, I'm I'm learning as as I go. You can help you with that too. I know, and and you know what, I had a rabbit hole one night where I was up till you know whatever hour in the morning learning learning code and you know so much of it is you know copy and pasting and you know building on the shoulders of giants who've already coded this stuff so yeah my, my motivation to make this podcast man as long as people 
are willing to come out and talk to me and teach me about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Like I got freaking Bitcoin Jesus on with me right now, right? Like how awesome is that, man? And just just by using Twitter, which you know is now X, which another question for you, I'll, I'll lead into that. Well, what are your th thoughts about this rebranding of X? I, I don't think I'm in a, a very good position to criticize any of uh, Elon's business decisions. So uh, <laughs> well, yeah. to me, it seems strange, but uh, you know, more yeah. power to it. It's interesting. I don't know how to say like, what am I, am I, am I Xing now? Am I tweeting? Am I Zing? Like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, we need a new new word for that. Yeah, very interesting. Lots of changes. Uh, you know, talk about AI, this platform itself, Riverside, Roger, like it starts to create these, the vertical clips for you now that you see on like YouTube Reels or sorry, uh, Instagram Reels, you, YouTube, all those, all those short videos now, like this is starting to generate. Not that, you know, everything's perfect that comes up, but but this tool is really starting to, to push AI in it as well. So is there anything else that you, you, you want to add or any way or that you'd like to promote on this episode? I think uh, if you want to see crypto being adopted around the world, mm -hmm. buying and holding is fine, but buying and spending and then taking the fiat that you're earning to buy more each time you spend the previous crypto, that's an even better way to continue to spread crypto adoption. So uh, spend and replace, please. For sure. And and Bitcoin Cash, you know, I've as as a user of, of Bitcoin Cash, I've used it to pay people that have, you know, helped me out with the with the podcast. It, it's so seamless. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't around for the days when when Bitcoin was like that. Uh, I'll have to take your word on it. Then that's how it worked. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, Bitcoin Cash definitely definitely works if, quick. If I can plug to the Bitcoin.com yeah. wallet, has this awesome feature called the shareable link feature. I don't know if you've used that yourself, but it's the smoothest way to send anybody, anybody crypto that I've ever that I'm aware of in the entire crypto ecosystem. You simply just send them a link. They tap on the link. If they already have the Bitcoin.com wallet, boom, the money's instantly in their wallet. If they don't already have it, it opens the app in the App Store. They download the app, and when the app's done downloading boom, the money is in their wallet. So it's technically two on-chain transactions. There's no custodian in the middle there. It works in every country. It's really an amazing tool to, to send people crypto. So try that shareable link feature on the send side of the Bitcoin.com wallet for Bitcoin Cash. It's really amazing. Something that's not possible on Bitcoin due to the high fees and, and custodial nature of what almost everybody's using there. What do you, what do you, what's your take on ordinals on Bitcoin? I, I didn't realize that the guy behind ordinals is one of the big uh, BSV guys uh, that uh, was doing a bunch of uh, BSV stuff. And then switched and, and made ordinals uh, recently. So uh, you know, if, if people like it, more power to them. But NFTs are not something that I'm interested in myself. You you were not really ever into collectibles, were you? And I did buy and sell a lot of Beanie Babies, but that was just to make money. <laughs> I wasn't interested in the collectible aspect uh, myself. I, I like the idea of collecting, you know, digital coins and 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 things that are gonna you know pay off. But uh, you know, to have to you know, clog up my house with all these things. Or if you're, if you're someone like you, who's who's traveling a lot, I'm sure, you know, that that makes the process a little bit more difficult. You know, speaking of traveling, you, you're doing some traveling coming up? Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, as soon as we hang up, I'm headed to the airport. So where are you heading to? I'm in Japan at the moment. I'm heading to, to Korea uh, later today. You have a you have a conference? Uh, I have lots of friends and, and different yeah. stuff. And uh, I've, you know, Quite a few places around the world I spend time. Very cool, man. I'll be okay. in Europe later this month. So. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Fun Blitz question. What's your favorite animal? Don't really have one. I don't know. Cats <laughs> and dogs are nice. <laughs> have you had, ever had pets growing up? I was an adult just as a kid. We had uh, some cats and dogs as a kid. Another Fun Blitz question. Are you a morning person or a night owl? I, it's kind of interesting. When I'm in Asia, I'm definitely a night owl. When I'm in the Caribbean, I'm a morning person. I'll get up at, you know, 4 a.m. So it just, I, for whatever reason, depends on what part of the world I'm in. If you had to choose one country to reside in, which country would it be? That's a hard one. Uh, I think country Earth, right? It's a big world out there. <laughs> That's Is that your way of saying we need to break down borders and have more unity? I, I guess that's a way of saying, you don't need more unity, but find the people that like you and you get along with and, and spend the time with those sort of people that you enjoy. Don't think you have to limit yourself. I and mean, what are the odds that the place that you were born and grew up at is going to be the best place on earth? Like the odds of that, maybe it is, but the odds of that seem pretty, pretty low. So go out there and uh, explore the world and, you know, make new friends. Thank you for doing the Having a Poor podcast, Roger. My pleasure, Brad. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm. Uh, I see it online. So thank you for keeping that up. Hey you, thanks for listening to the Having Report podcast. If you want to support, follow us on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a five-star rating. Follow us on our socials at Having Report. If you're Canadian and you want to buy Bitcoin or cryptocurrency for the first time, go to bitbuy.ca forward slash having for a $20 bonus. If you want to bring it to the next level and take self-custody of your cryptocurrencies, if you want $30 off the ultimate digital asset security device, BitFi, go to havingreport.com forward slash BitFi for more information. Until next time, I'm I'm Brad Mines.